Okay, so in your readings, you read about two different ideas. You read about logic models and results chains. These are very similar things. Um, they're essentially just a mapping or a list of all of the different inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes um, that go into a program or that come out of a program. Um, the World Bank book focuses more on log or on results chains. So this is um, from your reading. Um, this results chain for this high school math program that was trying to improve a math curriculum. And so if you look here, it, it has kind of a flow from inputs to activities, to outputs, outcomes, final outcomes. Um, and it just has a list of all of the inputs, a list of the activities, list of the outputs, etc. Um, and so this is kind of a simpler version of kind of a general list of all of the different program components. Um, and so that, that's kind of the results chain. This is not the same as a logic model. A logic model is a little bit more complicated. Um, it still has all of these same things. It's just that instead of saying, here's all of the inputs that then go into the activities, that then go into the outputs, you're more explicit. And so if we look at this picture here, um, this is an example of a logic model, um, which looks a little bit more complicated. And the reason why is because you link every input into some activity, which then generates some sort of output, which then leads to some sort of outcome. Um, in the results chain idea, you just have a column of all of the inputs and a column of all the activities. Here you say, um, the way I drew it here is the inputs are these red triangles. That's, there's no universal system here. That's just what I drew here. Um, and so all of these red triangles are inputs. And so some of these inputs here um, lead into specific, specific activities. These inputs don't lead into that activity. They lead into this activity. And so one issue with the results chain is it's just a massive list. You can't tell where each of the pieces go. Um, the logic model is more complete, more explicit. And so in general, when you have a logic model, you're always going to have some sort of input feeding into an activity and that activity will inevitably either lead to another activity or to some sort of output. Because the whole point of um, activities is to generate something, is to take inputs and turn them into outputs. So if you notice here, each of these things, it starts with this triangle, goes into this activity, generates some sort of output. Um, in this case, this activity leads to another activity, which then leads to different inputs, which then lead to outputs. So it can get a little bit more complicated, but the flow is still there. In the end, what you have is these outputs. These are the easy to measure things. So in the case of this truancy program that we talked about in the last section, um, this is different things that the activities generate. And so um, if students are absent five times in a row, then they receive, or then a first citation is mailed to their home. And so that is the activity, is the mailing of the citation. The output from that mailing is some number of citations mailed. And the, the organization can actually measure the number of letters that are being sent out. Um, so each of these yellow things is something that is measurable, that is a direct result of one of the activities. Um, the link between the yellow sections, these outputs, and then these green sections, which are the outcomes, that again is kind of the impact theory. You're saying, by having these citations getting mailed, that's going to lead to some increase in grades, that's gonna to lead to some increase in the number of people who know attendance expectations. And then as a result of those things, it will lead to the outcomes. So when you draw these logic models, you need to make sure that you have kind of all of these different components leading into each other. You don't wanna just have a huge box of all of the inputs leading to all of the activities. Um, you want to say this input specifically feeds into one of the activities, that activity then creates some sort of output, and then that output is then connected to one of these outcomes and leads to kind of the main social outcome you care about. Drawing these things, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. You can do it by hand. Um, there are computer programs that let you do it. There's a couple free websites. Um, I have them linked on the course page for today. And in the um, logic model assignment, once you get to that after the, or for this assignment, um, there's a list of different online systems you can use. Um, one of them is called diagram or diagrams.net. Um, it's fairly intuitive. You just click on a shape and then if you double click on it, you can name it something. So here's money, 
as one of the inputs. And then I can drag the shape around so we can add another input. Um, time, sure. So I can have these kind of there. I made them rounded rectangles. You can make them whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, we can also have some activities. So we'll make like a circle here and call this activity one. And if I move this around, I can move that to wherever I want on the page. But what's really cool about this diagrams.net website is I can click on the edge of one of these boxes um, and I can, or not there, I can click on that arrow and I can connect it to the activity. And the cool thing about that is if I move this activity, the arrow moves around with it. And so it's like linked. And so it's not gonna, I don't have to redraw any of the arrows later. I can rearrange stuff. So I can say this input goes, ah, click on the arrow. This input goes into that activity, neat. And then I can have the activity go to some specific outcome. I can have other inputs go into other activities, which then feed into other outcomes. Um, you can color these things differently. Um, it's generally a good idea to kind of color code these things and say, maybe the inputs will be these green ones. Uh, maybe the outputs will be, or the activities will be this. Um, you can choose different shapes, different colors, um, and just kind of generate a cool logic model here. When you're all done, you can export this as an image um, for putting into Word or putting in an R Markdown file. And you do that by going to File, Export As. And you can export it as a PNG file or as a PDF file. And then you can do whatever you want with it on your computer. Um, so that is how you um, make a logic model using diagrams.net. The other websites I have linked work very similarly to this. It's just kind of flowchart software. Um, another cool thing you can do is add a legend if you want. In that case, you can just add a rectangle down to the corner, shrink it down, color it green, and say like input. So these won't be linked to anything. They'll just kind of be down in the corner as your legend. You can do lots of cool design things. So just play with that. Um, but what I recommend doing is before you get to this point, before you just start mapping out things and thinking things off the top of your head, what I would recommend doing when you're trying to develop a logic model is to actually start with a results chain. Um, so for your program, think of every possible input and make a list of it, and then every possible activity and make a list of that, and every possible output, every possible outcome. Don't worry about making the connections between them. Just try to get a giant bank of all of the different components of the program then you can start mapping it out and you can say, here's this budget for new math program that's going to feed into the development and distribution of new textbooks. It's also going to feed into teacher training. It's also going to feed into this. Um, but like this municipal training facility, that's not necessarily going to feed into the printing and distribution. That's going to be more of teacher training. And so that's where you're going to start connecting the arrows after you have the results chain. Um, so in your assignment, um, I would recommend doing that. Um, make a general list of all of these different components and then spend the time to figure out how the, how the arrows are all connected um, based on the list that you've created. Um, one other common question is what is the difference between this logic model and an impact theory? So in the previous section, we finished talking about an impact theory, which is linking your whole program to the outcomes that you care about. A logic model is far more complex. So this is the impact theory here. You're just saying the program causes stuff to happen. And you're interested in that arrow right there. With a logic model, instead of saying this program, this program is really all of this other stuff, all of these inputs, all of these outputs, all of these out or all of these activities, all of this stuff is essentially this one little blue square here. Um, so this is kind of a simpler version of a logic model. You're just saying, my program does stuff. This is helpful if you're managing a program or administering a program because you can ensure that all of the different arrows are working. And if you remember from the first session, we talked about different forms of evaluation. You have impact evaluation, you have monitoring, you have cost-benefit analysis, you have um, all sorts of different types, different levels of evaluation. What those really mean are different ways of looking at the logic model. If you're doing a monitoring type of evaluation, that's making sure 
that the activities are running smoothly. And so that's focusing on the activities, making sure the inputs are getting transformed to the outcomes. And so that's where you're focusing on, on kind of these blue aspects. You're making sure the citations are actually getting mailed out. You're making sure students are actually attending the court. You're making sure that parents are actually receiving information about the program. And that's your focus. You don't care about the outcomes. You don't care about the impact. You're focused on just one aspect of this logic model. Um, and so that's, that's kind of one useful way of doing this is um, if you're managing a program as a nonprofit administrator or as a, um, a local government official, it's helpful to have this logic model because then you can monitor each of the pieces. Um, for the sake of this class, our focus is not making sure the activities are working. It's not making sure the outputs are happening. It's not monitoring the inputs. We care most about does all of this program cause this green stuff? Does it cause the social outcomes that we care about? And so that's why we also do this simplified impact theory. So we're saying the program causes these outcomes. That is our main question for this class. Being able to draw a logic model is very, very useful and very, very valuable. That's why you're doing it for this assignment and that's why you're doing it for your final project. Um, but the statistical analysis that we'll be doing in the rest of the class is focused on this green section here. Um, and so that is how you do a logic model. There's no kind of magic bullet way of doing this. It's really just making a list of all of the inputs, outputs, activities, and outcomes, and then linking them to each other. And um, the general rule, again, is every input has to go into some activity. Every activity generates some sort of output, and then those outputs lead to outcomes. And so as long as you keep that chain, um, as you're drawing these things, then um, you'll have a good sound logic model. So good luck.